Well, good morning. Good morning. Hey, I got uh, just a heads up for you. Spring break is in two and a half weeks. Two and a half weeks and you are out of here, right? How many people are going somewhere? Like anywhere but here, right? Everybody's going somewhere. So there's something that all of you have in common and let me go get it. Suitcases have come a long way when you can do, give it like a action spin, right? Now, everyone's going to have to find some bags. I, 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 we had, my wife and I had four kids who were all grown. They have kids. And we have lots of bags at our house from like all different trips that go everywhere, things that people couldn't find. So I brought a few in to just give you a demonstration. What are some of the bags of, of life? And like, sometimes you even remember what they're from, right? I bought this one in Ecuador a long time ago. I paid a lot of money, and they were like, well, it's made out of leather, and it'll last a long time. You know what? I paid a lot of money, and it has lasted a long time, right? Beaten up, but still, still works, right? My daughter played soccer, and Lord knows when you play soccer, you got all kinds of stuff. So we got like Nike bags that you can like put soccer balls in the ends and do all that. We got those. This is like one of the little bags that you just, you know, when you look under the sink and you're like, what is that bag? And you open it up and go like, oh, so there's where my Aleve PM went. All right, and these are the ones that you just sort of throw in. This bag doesn't go anywhere by itself. This bag is one that lives to live in another bag, right? It's just sort of a sub bag inside your bag. One of my sons went to Westmont and he, uh, he played, that was his nickname, Juice With It. Can you imagine? Right? <laughs> He'll die if he sees this. But, right, he played rugby and actually came out with most of his brain cells uh, still intact. So. All right, then you got these little bags that you can just sort of hang somewhere, right? <laughs> then you got this one. This baby is a veteran. These are the ones you only break out for mission trips, right? Because you can hide like a sleeping bag in there. You can uh, put all kinds of gear in here. But the trick is, in the end, no matter what you put in there, there's the scale at the airport, right? 50 pounds. Then I got... I don't even know what this is from. It's just, this is more like your gear. How many of you have a backpack here? For how many of you is your backpack too heavy? Yeah, yeah these were like made by chiropractors. <laughs> then these are the bags that we all have far too many of from somewhere, unless you live in a town where you can't get them anymore, and then you borrow them from friends and smuggle them into your town. <laughs> all right. You got your shaving kit. It's got your Halls. Oh, I wonder where those were. All right. Halls cough drops. Then my wife and I, next week, my wife and I are both away at the same time, which put us in small suitcase challenge. All right, because we have like a travel suitcase, but we're never out of time. So I bought her this one the other day. Sweet. It's aerodynamic. It's shiny. Its spin factor is very high. <laughs> uh, it does everything. It does everything but fly the plane. You know, we, what do we, we have bags because we got stuff to carry. We got stuff to carry. You realize how much stuff we have? How much stuff, as a, as a country, we are so blessed. We got too much stuff to even fit, usually sometimes in our houses. Yeah, near me, all over the place, they're building these buildings that are big square things that you go and like you rent a garage to put the stuff in that won't fit in the house that you usually have your stuff. Right? I mean, so we got, we got bags, we got all types of things. But a lot of you are going to be looking uh, 
for some bags. So if you're, if you're in a hurt, see me. See me. Hey, this morning I want us to look at this passage. All right, and this is taken from 1 John chapter 1. This is, this is one of the sweet passages of Scripture. A sweet passage of Scripture. So let's, uh, let's read this. Let's read it together. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which... Come on, get, folks, this is a college. You can read. Okay, here we go. Ready? <laughs> that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testify to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was from the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you may also have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim we have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and we do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, he is the light, and we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. That last verse is a little frightening. A little frightening. Right? But all of us sort of know that uh, there were people of, of sin. You know, John, when he's writing this book, he, the, he refers sort of back to where he was in the gospel, right? I mean, some of you, how many of you have written a paper and sort of maybe referred to something that you researched for something else, right? Uh, <laughs> thank you for that confession. The... Uh, Right? So let's look at this first section here, which is really um, John giving a sort of a recap of who we are and what the gospel is. Right? It says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, right? And you go to 1 John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, the Word was with God, right? I mean, so he's sort of coming back to that same language, which we have, heard, we have seen with our eyes, and we have looked at and our hands have touched. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. Right? Life, when he talks about life, this is what we've seen. This is what we proclaim. He's proclaiming about Jesus. Right? Life is a descriptor of Jesus that John is using here. He says, we proclaim to you what we have seen and what we have heard. He is not only someone who has seen Jesus and has walked with Jesus, but he has heard Jesus. So he's talking about things that he has seen and he has heard. Seen and he has heard. I've been with him. I have been with him. I have heard him. He's proclaiming to these folks. And the Jesus I saw and heard many years ago is the Jesus I have been proclaiming and continue to proclaim. That's who I'm talking about. He was very clear to make very clear to us, the readers, and to those whom he was addressing, who he was talking about. He's throwing out Jesus' credentials. This is not about John. This is not about John. This is about Jesus, the one who he is proclaiming, right? And he says, I saw and heard many years ago, and the, Jesus, this is who I'm talking about. And we write this. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with him. Right? And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. He's talking about the fact that we are invited into a relationship with the living God through Jesus. Right? As Christians, that is what makes us Christians. It is that relationship that we're able to have with the living God. Right? Through Jesus who came and died for us. John's trying to sort of throw that out and say, this is what this is. This is who I'm representing, and this is who has sent me. He says, 
and we write this to make our joy complete. To make our joy complete. Right? What brings you joy? What brings you joy? You know, I, I think that our theme for this semester is hope. And for some people, having some hope is the, is the on-ramp to total joy. Right? Because when we are hopeless, we are joyless. It's really hard to be a joyful, hopeless person. But there's a lot of, uh, the, you know, it's synonymous there, right? What's going on? Our joy complete. This will make our joy complete. What is it that will make our joy complete? And what is it that sort of restores and, and refreshes this relationship of the God who has come to have a relationship with us and our relationship with him? Right, and that is the message of hope, right? We, we're, what is our hope in Christ? What is our hope in Christ and how is that relationship, what do we do to nurture that relationship? What do we do to make it go and what do we do to make it grow? Right, what, what does that look like in our lives? He goes on to say this. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. In other words, John is saying, hey, of all the time I've spent with Jesus, those three years I've spent walking along with him, sitting with him, hearing from him, watching him, observing from him, seeing people respond to him. It's, let me tell you what that's about. And that is God is light. God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. You know, the world we live in is a pretty dark place. It's a pretty dark place. But there is something about the light. There is power found in light. Because, and that's the representation of God is light. It is light versus darkness. All right, confession moment. Everyone close your eyes, bow your heads. How many of you used a nightlight growing up? Okay, close your eyes tighter. How many of you still use one? Okay, you can open your eyes. What is it, what's magical about the one and a half watts? What's magical about them? Right, it's magical enough because the one and a half watts, you put that in a dark room and then the one and a half watts wins. The light always wins. And our lives, are lived in this world that darkness always feels like it wants to envelop and sometimes as Christians we feel like the darkness is too big and our light is too small. But the reality is this, God is light and when you are in Christ and you have given your life to him, God's light radiates from you. Right, we, we face that challenge all the time. I mean, we, we look around and we say, I, you know, I, I see this, but I, I, I've got a light, but I don't have enough wattage. Right, God isn't looking for your wattage, God is looking for your willingness. Right, for us to be able and willing to come and be a light. Here we go. God is light. In him there is no darkness. And if we claim to have fellowship with him, Right? And yet we walk in the darkness, we lie, and we don't live out the truth. I mean, John sort of saying it the way it is. Right? You, you can't have both ways in our lives, and, and that's the battle that we fight all the time with sin. Right? Which intrudes and, and is called, you know, the great deceiver. I mean, it's all these things, right? Sin never happens by accident. Right? You're never walking along in a conversation and all of a sudden we're like, and like, and go, whoa, I just sinned. How'd that happen? Sin doesn't sneak up on anybody and sort of like, gotcha. Right? When we sin, it's usually something that we've run through the filters and we, th and we weigh the cost. What's the inconvenience? Who's going to know? What's going to happen? Right, we, we sort of throw all those things all on the scale and we say, God, I'm really sorry. Thank you for your forgiveness. And just this one time, just this really little one. Right? And John is saying here, we walk in the light as he's in the light, right? 
We have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus purifies us from all of that. I mean, that is the great joy, and that is the great hope, right? That we can be cleansed, and we are cleansed by the blood of Christ. By the blood of Christ. And then he said, if we claim to be without sin, and I don't think anybody here is going like, no. All right, perfect people? Anybody? Perfect? All right, perfect? No? All right, if we claim to be at, without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So we're, we're actually pretty upfront that we're not claiming to be sinless. But none of us are claiming to be sin free. And so we all got stuff to deal with. We all got stuff to deal with. Right, but then one of the great passages, if you, read a, if you remember a verse in Scripture, remember this. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Ours is the God of the second chance. Ours is the God of the third chance, the fourth chance. Ours is the God of grace that we find through Christ. Right, and if we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and the word is not with us. And again, we're not saying, I, I, I got nothing. We, I got, it's a matter, the question is, how big a bag do you need for what you got? Right, how big a bag do you need to tote around what it is that, you've, that you're, uh, you're bringing? The, the reality of sin. The reality of sin. All right, I need five volunteers, real quick. Five volunteers who have backpacks. Anybody? Come on up. Come on up, bring your bag with you. Bring your bags forward, please. Okay, right up here, right, on, right between these speakers, right here. No, no, don't put your bag down. You've got to be strong. All right, this is what I want you to do. All right, all right, here we go. Come on up. Try, no, we're not putting them on our backs the way they were intended. Because what happened, I mean, you put them on your back, right, this, oh my gosh. 1-800 chiropractic, uh, this thing is heavy, right? But if you've got this and you put this, you wear it on your back, right? They make it so that you're supposed to not hurt yourself. You have a parachute? Yes, sir. Oh, my gosh. My word. Who's teaching your classes? I mean, right? But what I'd like for you to do is go like this. And when you get too tired, put it down. Just sort of hold it out. Who has the smallest back? Who has the smallest back here? There he is. All right, I'm going to give it a little weight test here. Oh, he's going to be up here a long time. <laughs> She's trying not to show the pain on her face right now, right? But we got all day. Now, all right. How many of you wish that you had lighter bags right now? <laughs> He's going, I am so good. I, am so, I love that. I love that. Uh, all right, you can sit down. Thank you very much. You know, folks, the reality is this. They, they were great volunteers. <laughs> They'll be like standing in a warm shower later. But um, you know what? And when you looked out there, right, were, were you not measuring, like, who looked like they had the lightest bag and who had the heaviest? And this is the reality of sin in our lives. Often we, we look around and we compare ourselves to other people. Right, in our lives, we, we look around and we say, oh, I'm glad I don't, I'm not carrying that. I'm glad I'm not carrying that. Because that would crush me. But what I got, nah, I'm okay. I'm okay. You know, comparison. And... When it comes to the way that we live our lives and we evaluate our lives, we, we tend to always want to evaluate our lives on the horizontal. How am I doing? As opposed to evaluating our lives on the vertical. What does God have for me? What does God have for me? Right? The fact is we're all carrying them. And there's a, th this passage is a passage of restoration. It's a passage of restoration. It is God's invitation for us. To put our stuff down. To put our stuff down. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins. You know, 
We're called to be a people of confession. We're called to be a people of restoration. A people who understand and visit the place that refreshes us in our walks with Christ. That's what this passage is about. And that's why I love this passage. Because if there is a passage in scripture that is the celebration of the hope that is ours in Jesus, it is right there. Right there. But it takes surrender. It takes surrender. You see, in our lives, the biggest challenge is with what we've got and how much we carry around. But God invites us to be a people who are refreshed. In a couple of weeks, when how many of you are going to get on an airplane for some part of spring break? Not quite a few of you. So this is what you have to, this is what you're going to face. Backdrop. When you get to the airport, they ask, would you like to check your bags? Right? What is the qualifier for that? Right? Some of you just look at it and say, I'm not paying the extra $25. I will back up the entire line on the plane while I attempt to cram this bag in the overhead bin. Right? And make everyone else in the plane miss connections because of me. Right? We check our bags because we don't think we can afford it. And so we'll carry them with us. But sometimes we check our bags because we don't want to be bothered with them anymore. And when you check them, how does it feel when you check your bag? Great. Why? You're free of them. You're free of them. You get to go and make your connections at some airport and just be like, oh, i got to drag this thing all over the place, right? You don't have to worry about when you've got an old bag and the, one of the wheels is loose and the thing is sort of wobbling and you don't have much style going through the terminal because the thing's jiggling, right? I mean, you got all these different things. We even make bags that attach to our bags. My new briefcase flits like right over the handle. So I have like, like a bad a bag appendage. But we want to be free of the weight. How many of you have ever gone to check your bags and have been really worried about that 50 pound thing? How many of you have ever been flagged because you got too many... Right, you're in there going like, oh, 51.3 pounds. Really, is the plane not going to take off? <laughs> but we don't want to be the hassle. We don't want to, we want to be free of the hassle. We don't want to worry about overhead bin space. I'm in group four and I know there's never space when I get there. We have lots of things in our bag and we feel like everything's got to come with us. John calls for us to be a people, he's encouraging us to be a people of response. And this is what I'd like to do this morning. It's a little, this is different than anything we've done all year. But um, I'm going to invite you to sit for a moment and reflect on what bags are you carrying that you need to give to Jesus? What, what in your life What's the burden that buries you? What's the thing that you, you hide and maybe you're ashamed that you do? What's the relationship that's broken that you maybe needed to do some more work on restoring? When we read Confess Your Sins, None of us instantly go like, I got nothing. And God says that this is where we find restoration. This is where we find restoration. So we're going to do something a little bit different. And this is only if you want to. Only if you want to. If not, I'm going to ask you to just, rather than stand and sing, maybe just be seated and um, the band's going to play. But this morning, in the pews in front of you in those little card things, there are a bunch of index cards. And sometimes for some of us, the best way for us to really truly leave something, this is what happens too often when as Christians we confess our sins. We confess our sins, we say, you know, God forgive me. And then, then we pick up our sins and we bring them right back with us. And we carry them around like they are not been as far as the east is from the west. So I'm going to invite you to do this. I'm dragging this baby over here.
and we're going to put the bag at the cross. And as we sing this last song, if you feel like God has moved you, you want to write down whatever it is, that bag that you're carrying on that card, and you want to just drop it at the cross, and you're doing it symbolically by getting on your feet sort of makes it feel more like I'm leaving it there, then I want to invite you to do that. If you're in the balcony, in the middle aisles, down in the front, against the rail in the middle aisles, there's, there's some baskets there. And, uh, and you can do that. So let's have this be a time of reflection, renewal, and restoration as, uh, as we sing together and respond. And then at the close of the song, um, I'll close this with a benediction.